Hello, I'm a graduate student at the Institute of Science and Technology in Austria, and I'll present some results how we use Julia um, in evaluating this topological invariance. And I hope you're a physicist because this is pretty technical, but if you have questions, of course, about quantum mechanics, you can also ask me. Um, we're interested in uh, the intersection of these uh, like areas, like topological physics, non-equilibrium and many-body physics. Um, while I had projects in several intersections, it's difficult to combine all of the stuff. And the main idea is to generate new uh, material properties and uh, eventually uh, improve materials which are, um, so to say, they are up to now. And um, in this project, I only combine topological physics and non-equilibrium, which is already pretty difficult, um, but there are some interesting phenomena. And what is topology? Topology, you can understand it from a physics point of view. Very simple, if you just consider the pendulum of Foucault, um, that if the Earth was flat and not rotating, um, there would not be a phase. But if you rotate now the Earth and you have a curved manifold, then there will be a little phase of two millimeters each of oscillation. And you can understand this in terms of differential geometry and topology. And it's uh, really interesting, even though it's a very simple phenomena. And then physics, normally what we have is uh, we see these geometric phases and this just means that if you start in North Pole and then you go south and then you go east and then you go north, then your vector will have rotated. So there's parallel transport because it's a curved manifold. And uh, the same we see in, in, in quantum physics. And then there's this phenomenon which looks uh, completely different, but is very much related. So if you have a magnetic field and you have some electrons, they will uh, do this little cyclotron orbits. But on the edge, they cannot complete their orbit so there will be a flow. And this is um, uh, very <laughs> sketchy, the, the bulk boundary correspondence, which you will also see. And then there are like this topological excitations, vortices, and this kinds of stuff. And um, yeah, and it's all related essentially to, this, to the same phenomenon. And um, so unfortunately, I cannot go in much detail, but in quantum physics, um, the, so to say, all of the stuff, the curvature arises through the Berry connection, which is just the change of uh, the wave function due to some um, parameter. So here I chose parameter k, but it, you can do whatever you want. And uh, the Berry curvature, so to say, the curvature on this complex manifold uh, is defined just um, normally how you would also do it in electrodynamics. And then, uh, for instance, for a 2D material, uh, for some 2D materials, you can calculate the churn number, and this will just be the integral um, of this Berry curvature. And here I show you how you can do it in Julia. I mean, it's a very simple uh, calculation. Um, every grad student uh, who dives into topology and also to do this. Um, but still, it's very simple in Julia. So you have these little cells, and you basically, what you want to know, what is the flux, so to say, these yellow rings, what is the flux through each cell? And you can do this in a parallelized fashion. Um, in this way, I mean, I cannot go into this, but it's, you see, it's rather simple. And it looks like this. This is the curvature. And for this uh, model, the, um, when we're in the topological regime, you see that there's some finite curvature on this manifold. And this integrates to 1. So there's a churn number. And uh, from a point of intuition, this just means that there is like a charge inside of the surface and we are measuring the flux through the surface. So if we are outside, so if we move this ball somewhere else and the, this little charge is not inside anymore, then uh, the turn number will be zero. Um, so what is the singularity over there? This is exactly the point where the gap closes of the system. So it's a band system and this point is really interesting because uh, I mean here it's just the point, but for more interesting um, so to say, uh, um, um, examples and models, this is not just the point. And you see that the topological phase transition ex happens exactly at the point where you, uh, where the, the, so to say, the gap closes. So there are four different um, possibilities for the parameters where the gap closes, and this is where you go from being non-topological to becoming topological. So in our uh, models, we look at driven systems, because there you can do other stuff as well. 
So we just solved the Schrödinger equation uh, on an operator level. And this is already interesting because um, so we have a system which is driven, so it does not have a fixed energy. The energy is not conserved. But what we can do is we can diagonalize the time translation operator and learn a lot from it and, and look into the topology of the time translation operator. And then Julia, it looks like this. I mean, you can, I mean, this is very simple. You can just plug in an operator into uh, the differential equation package and it will solve the Schrödinger equation. It doesn't need to be a wave function. It can just be any matrix. So uh, what can we do with this stuff? So here I've shown an example with many stuff that you will not understand, but just sketchy um, from our own research. So we look at um, topology of periodically driven molecules, and what you see is that there are uh, these gap closings, then there are these states which are localized, so these are these edge states which I've mentioned before, and there are also uh, there's a topological charge associated with this uh, topological Dirac-Cons. But now, um, this is not the only thing you can do. It turns out in the system there's a non-abelian feature. So just, um, if you have Dirac cones in different bands, um, they do not commute with each other. They carry some kind of fractional charge, some kind of um, color charge, so to say. And this is why you have uh, this kind of anionic behavior, and they do not commute. And um, there's a new topological invariant associated with this model, which is the Euler class. And uh, there's, uh, there's some kind of new Euler connection, which also gives you some rise to some kind of curvature and a topological invariant. And now the question is, how can you find this in a real uh, system? And for this, you need, to do, you need to know where the gap closes. Now it turns out, exactly at the point where the gap closes, uh, this gap function, so to say, if you just calculate the difference between the energies, this defines a manifold. So the, the gap manifold, so where the gap clo closes, is it a manifold, and you can use the implicit function theorem just to continue it. And there are some um, libraries how to do this, um, and that's really cool because now in the Julia ecosystem, um, the, the mathematicians already did a lot of work, and you can just build on this work, and you don't need to uh, recalculate, so to say, the, the uh, parallel transport and uh, all of this, you can just use it. And here for, I have a simple example. If you do not use this, um, how you could converge just using finite diff um, to, to this manifold. And um, it turns out, I mean, it's uh, for real systems, this can be really complicated. So this is um, everything which is colored here is where the gap closes. And of course, this is um, in a real uh, system, it's not as easy as you, you would do in a toy model, and there are many knots and braidings and stuff like this, but if you search, you can also find beautiful, so to say, knots, and this is exactly what we wanted to find. This is exactly where, so to say, the, um, you have this Euler invariant, and you can also see it in the wave function that um, there are these Dirac cones, and the Dirac cones, they have Dirac strings in between, and you can see them in the wave function, and these are strings which you cannot remove, um, and they go through each other, so there are different Dirac strings associated with different Dirac cones, and they form something like a knot. Yeah, and that's basically it, that's what I wanted to say, that you can use this nice ecosystem to do very complicated stuff, and um, yeah. Uh, by the way, that, that's in Vienna, if you ever, uh, if you have not seen it, it's a beautiful city, and um, yeah, we, we can do this uh, quasi-energy business, and we can use these nice packages. And uh, yeah, I'm open for questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really fascinating how much you can do with uh, fairly straightforward Julia. Uh, any one quick question? Yeah, thanks for the great talk. So I have a question about bifurcation. Uh, so bifurcation toolkit. I'm just curious, like how you use it in 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 this specific specific context. Maybe you can say a few words about that. Yeah. So if you have a differential equation, um, if you have a dynamic system, it's very straightforward to use it because then you can just calculate where your system has a bifurcation. But if you so to say, start with a different thing, you start with a manifold, um, the flow on this manifold will define your differential equation. So this is already the first 
difference, you, you need to use the diff, uh, this implicit function theorem to define your differential equations, and then you can use it, which is not super easy. This is why I used all kinds of packages and saw what works best. I mean, in the end, I used this very naive approach, um, but I mean, this is work in progress. So I think that they have really um, fascinating ways, if, if you're at a branching point, how to classify it. So um, that's where I would use it, like if you have a bifurcation or something. Yeah. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker once more.